Hi grade 4! Welcome back to our online class. Our lesson for today is about sound. In this lesson, we're going to find out what are the pitch and intensity of a sound? How can we change the pitch and intensity of a sound? And what are the dangers of loud sounds and how can we protect ourselves from them? First, we have the pitch. It refers to the sharpness of sound. Have you ever noticed that the sound made when a crow shrieks in alarm is sharper than the sound made when a tiger roars? The sound made when a dog yells is also sharper and more piercing than the sound made when it barks. Sounds which are sharp and piercing like a crow's shriek and a dog's yelp are said to have a high pitch. High pitch sound are produced when the object making the sound vibrates very fast. Sounds which are not sharp like a tiger's roar or a dog's bar have a low pitch. Low pitch sounds are produced when the object making the sound vibrates slowly. Now let's have an activity. A short activity about high pitch sound and a low pitch sound. I will be flashing pictures and then you're going to identify if that object has a high pitch sound or a low pitch sound. Are you ready? All right, let's proceed. First, a bird. Okay, what's your answer? High pitched. Very good. Now next, we have... Okay, a cow's moo. What's your answer? Low pitch. Very good. How about a lion's roar? Low pitch. Last, we have a bell. What's your answer? Of course, it is high pitch. Now, I have a question. Why does an adult's voice have a lower pitch than a child's voice? What happens to our vocal cords as we grow older? The answer is, our vocal cords grow longer and thicker as we grow into adults. So, our vocal cords vibrate slower when we become adults. Thus, an adult's voice has a lower pitch than a child's voice. Did you get it? Okay, very good. We can change the pitch of the sound made by an object. If we make the object vibrate slower, the pitch of the sound it makes will become lower. If we make the object vibrate faster, the pitch of the sound it makes will become lower. Now 
Now let's proceed to the intensity of a sound. It is how loud the sound is. A loud sound has a high intensity. Loud drumming. The sound of and loud music from speakers are examples of loud sounds. Meanwhile, soft sound has a low intensity. The sound of a whispering person. The soft humming of machines and the soft chirping of a bird are examples of soft sounds. So now, again, let us have a short activity about loud sound and soft sound. Again, I'm going to flash a picture and then you're going to identify if they have a loud sound or a soft sound. Are you ready? Okay, let's proceed. First, we have a mouse. What's your answer? Soft, is it correct? Okay, Next one. How about this one? Okay, how about that? What's your answer? Very good. Loud sound. Next one. How about this? Preview. Okay, a racing car. Loud sound. Next, how about a snake? Soft, of course. And last, a fish. Obviously, it has a soft sound. Very good. Always remember, a sound with a high intensity is not the same as a sound with a high pitch, okay? A sound with a high pitch can have a low intensity or a soft sound. For example, sounds made by a bird chirping softly or a flute playing gently have a high pitch but low intensity. On the other hand, a sound with a low pitch can have a high intensity or loud. For example, the sound made by a bass drum has a low pitch but can be at high intensity when the drum is struck very hard. We can change the intensity or loudness of a sound made by an object if we change the force of the action that makes the object vibrate. Now let us look at the example of striking a drum. If you strike it with greater force, a loud and high intensity sound is produced. Okay, clap your hands very hard. Go! Okay, what have you observed? Diba? It has a loud sound and your force is greater. Next, how about when we strike it with little force? A soft sound and low intensity sound is produced. 
So now let us clap your hands softly. As you can see, it has a soft and low intensity sound. And for the quick check, what causes a change in the pitch of a sound? I'll give you 30 seconds to think about your answer. Go! Okay, and our answer is a change in how fast or harsh or how slow an object vibrates. Okay, so when it's slower, the sound or the pitch is like this. Okay, lower pitch and slow. And when it is faster, the pitch is higher, like this. Okay, very good. Now, let's proceed to the second one. Now let us proceed to loud sounds. Loud sounds are dangerous. When we hear a loud sound, we tend to cover our ears to block out the sound. This is our body's natural response to protect our ears. When we hear loud sounds, it damages our hearing and can even cause deafness or the what we call loss of hearing even if the sounds are not loud enough to cause pain in our ears prolonged exposure to loud sounds can lead to permanent ear damage the loudness or intensity of a sound is measured in a unit called decibel. Now let us look at the intensity of some sounds and see how they can affect our hearing. First, when it is zero decibel, it is the lowest possible intensity that can be heard by human ear. And when it becomes 60 to 70 decibel, it is the sound of the normal conversation. When it becomes 85 decibel, it is the sound of the city traffic. When it becomes 90 to 95 decibel, it is the noise 
from subway train. So this is the intensity at which prolonged exposure may result in hearing loss. And when it becomes 115 decibel, okay, it is the sound from a loud rock concert. 125 decibel, when you have a driller at 0 0.5 meter away from you, it is where the intensity at which pain in ears or pain in ear begins. And last, 140 decibels. Okay? It is the sound of a jet engine, wherein the intensity at which even short-term exposure can cause permanent ear damage. Do you know, class, that loud sounds causes noise pollution. It refers to the sounds that are loud, unpleasant, and disruptive to human and animal life. These sounds can be made by animals, humans, or machinery. One of the most common sources of noise pollution is transportation, especially from motor vehicles. Noise pollution can cause deafness, loss of sleep, anger, and stress. Now let's explore. Name the sources of noise pollution in and around your home. Make a list of how you can reduce this pollution on your note. It is important to take care of our ears and make sure we do not damage them. Here are some simple and effective ways we can follow. First, rest your ears in a quiet environment at night. Next, keep the volume on music players, stereos, and TV sets low. Next, wear protective earplugs or earmuffs when working in places where there is constant exposure to loud sounds. And last, Avoid going to noisy places like theaters, amusement centers, and games arcades for long periods of time. And that's it. And now let us have a quick glance of our lesson for today. Again, sound is described by its pitch, which can be changed by changing how fast an object vibrates. Sound also described by its intensity, which can be changed by changing the force with which an object is struck. Also, sound, which is loud, can cause ear damage and deafness, which can be prevented by protecting and taking care of our ears. So, did you get it? Okay, that's good. Now, get your Science 4B book and open it on page 119 to 120 to answer self-check. And again, this is Teacher Ivy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you and stay safe.